This photo looks rather boring to the average eye. But for physicists, this photo represents one of humanity's biggest intellectual achievements. But did you know that there are eight things that followed one another without which this photograph would be impossible? Whoa, well the hole is 55 million years away. So how in the world were we able to capture the photo? Newtonian mechanics and gravity. As formulated by Isaac Newton in his Principia Mathematica, published in 1687, set the stage for the modern understanding of gravitational forces and started our journey of finding black holes. Okay, what do you mean by modern understanding? How did our understanding of gravity change after Newton's explanation? Before Newton, the way humanity understood gravity was mostly based on observations, like the Greeks and scholars from the Renaissance period, for example. Aristotle believed that objects naturally move toward their proper place in the cosmos. Earthly objects, composed of earth and water, moved downwards, whereas celestial objects, composed of ether, moved in perfect circles. By Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD, we had an understanding of stars and planets, but as us, the Earth, being the center of the universe, so everything spun around us. Now, why we were spinning and the fact that we were spinning around the Sun, not vice versa, was proposed by Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century. In the 17th century, Newton proposed that all objects of the universe attracted each other with a force of gravity that was proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their, their centers. It means that the strength of the pull between two objects is determined by two things, how heavy the objects are and how far apart they are. The heavier the objects, the stronger the pull. The farther apart they are, the weaker the pull. His discovery mattered a lot because through observation and using Newton's laws, physicists and astronomers could predict the orbits of planets around the Sun with much better accuracy. And because of that, these physicists and astronomers trusted that these same laws could be used to study other parts of the universe. Okay, I see what you're saying. Physicists were inspired by Newton's explanation and his success of how objects and planets all move in one single theory. So they started searching for other fundamental laws of nature. And then my question is, when did this become relevant to black holes? They had the entire cosmos to explore. So you would think that we would go straight to study that, right? But actually it was first very important to apply Newton's success to electricity and magnetism. I know they seem unrelated, but bear with me. They were just separate fields. Charles Augustin de Coulomb, discovered an inverse square law similar to Newton's law of gravitation, but for electric charges. Coulomb's law tells us that the pull or push between two charged objects depends on two things, how strong their charges are and how far apart they are. Just like gravity, the force gets stronger if the charges are stronger or if the objects are closer together. Then, 40 years later, Hans Christian Oersted demonstrated that electric currents create magnetic fields, which suggested a link between electricity and magnetism, two phenomena that were previously thought to be unrelated. Hence, electromagnetism was fully realized by James Clerk Maxwell in the mid-19th century. Maxwell's equations unified electricity and magnetism into a single theory of electromagnetism, predicting that light itself is an electromagnetic wave. This was like an extension of the idea of a unified force, which was exactly what showed that light, electricity and magnetism were all part of the same phenomena. And how does that relate to finding black holes? I didn't know electromagnetism was connected to it all. I thought it was just about exploring the cosmos and then we'd come to this conclusion. Maxwell had a direct influence on the guy who first predicted the existence of black holes, even if he didn't do it on purpose. Albert Einstein, not her, she's not Albert Einstein. <laughs> Maxwell's equations implied that light was an electromagnetic wave traveling at a constant speed in a vacuum, regardless of the motion of the force or observer. This was a key issue that Einstein addressed. Einstein proposed something called the equivalence principle, which said that the effects of gravity are indistinguishable from the effects of acceleration. And this principle is what made a deep connection between motion and gravity, meaning that gravity could affect time and space. Einstein proposed that massive objects cause a distortion in space-time, which is felt as gravity. 
This was a revolutionary idea because it replaced the Newtonian concept of gravity as a force acting at a distance with a new understanding of gravity as the curvature of space-time itself. If you guys are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. And when was it that Einstein first talked about black holes? Einstein didn't name them, but he did predict it in his theory of general relativity. Einstein's equations allowed for solutions that implied regions of space-time with gravity so strong that not even light could escape. The first exact solution to Einstein's equations that suggested black holes came from Carl Schwarzschild in 1916, who found a solution describing the space-time around a point mass like a star. It included what is now known as the Schwarzschild radius, where g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the black hole, and c, the speed of light. This formula gives the radius at which the escape velocity from the black hole equals the speed of light. In simple words, it is the distance from the center of the black hole in which nothing, not even light, can escape the black hole's gravitational pull. And when was it that technology to actually see black holes was developed? Radio astronomy. It started as an accidental discovery. It all started in the 1930s with Carl Jensky, an engineer working for Bell Telephone Laboratories. He was investigating static noise that interfered with shortwave transatlantic voice transmissions and discovered that the interference was due to radio waves coming from the Milky Way. Grote Rubber, an amateur radio operator and engineer, took Jensky's discovery further by building the first purpose-built radio telescope in his backyard in 1937. He would listen to the radio waves coming from space, essentially. In the 50s and 60s, astronomers used telescopes, obviously, much more advanced than the other one, and discovered extremely bright areas at the centers of some galaxies. These bright spots, called quasars and active galactic nuclei, AGNs, are thought to be supermassive black holes pulling in matter from their surroundings. As this material spirals into the black hole, it emits powerful radio waves that can be detected here on Earth, even though these galaxies are incredibly far away. And this became one of the earliest pieces of evidence of the existence of black holes. And how about the features of the black hole? Like, are they just static and they're just a hole in space-time? No. In 1963, Roy Kerr, a New Zealand mathematician, found a solution to Einstein's field equations that described the space-time geometry around a rotating black hole. Unlike the earlier Schwarzschild solution, which described non-rotating black holes, the Kerr metric includes the effect of angular momentum, or spin. The Kerr solution was crucial because most real black holes in the universe are likely rotating. Using the Kerr metric, theorists could better predict and understand the behavior of accretion disks, rings of gas and dust swirling into a black hole, and the jets of material some black holes eject at high speeds. These features are often sources of the radio waves detected by radio telescopes. When did these astronomers imagine black holes looked like? I mean, we already knew what they looked like far before we took a photograph. Initially, thanks to numerical relativity, it provided a way to translate the complex mathematical equations of general relativity into detailed visual simulations that could predict the dynamics of a black hole, especially in extreme conditions that are impossible to replicate here on Earth. Numerical relativity, first developed in the 60s and 70s, allowed physicists to simulate the interactions of black holes with each other and with their surroundings. This includes the merging of black holes the distortion of space-time around them, and the gravitational waves produced by these events. This was all done using computers. One of the most direct contributions of numerical relativity to visualizing black holes was in predicting the appearance of a black hole's event horizon and the shadow it would cast against the surrounding light. These simulations showed a dark central region, the shadow, surrounded by a bright ring of light bent by the black hole's intense gravity. Okay, we're getting much closer to the photograph. So, how was it that they were able to take it? Do you remember the radio technology that I talked about? Well, it became known as Very Long Baseline Interferometry or VLBI, which is a type of astronomical interferometry used in radio astronomy. VLBI used several radio telescopes located far apart, some on the Earth, some even in space. These telescopes simultaneously observed the same astronomical object, like a black hole, 
Each telescope collects radio waves emitted by the black hole. The exact time of the signal's arrival is recorded using highly precise atomic clocks, like hydrogen maser clocks. The data is processed by supercomputers. This process adjusts for the time delay between when different telescopes receive the same signal, due to their varying distances from the source. The correlated data are used to construct an image. Because the telescopes are spread out, they mimic a single large telescope, whose size is equivalent to the maximum distance between any two telescopes. This virtual telescope can theoretically achieve much higher resolutions than any individual telescope. The EHT project began as a theoretical concept to link existing radio observatories to create an Earth-sized virtual telescope. Telescopes from around the world, including in locations as diverse as Spain, Hawaii, Chile, and the South Pole, were linked to form the EHT. The EHT initially focused on two supermassive black holes, Sagittarius A in the Milky Way and M87 in the Virgo A galaxy. M87 was ultimately chosen for the first image due to its massive size and the relative stability of its surrounding emission features. In April 2017, all the EHT sites observed M87 at the same time. The telescopes worked together to collect radio waves over several days. Clear weather at all sites was crucial for success. The massive amounts of data were shipped to highly specialized supercomputing centers at the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy in Germany and MIT Haystack Observatory in the US. The data were then synchronized and processed, and they did it through very complex algorithms that could filter out the noise and do other stuff that I will not delve into here. But the entire process and analysis of data took two years. And then finally, in 2019, we got the spectacular photograph of the black hole M87.